Deborah Sandage. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to be here to speak for Nikon on the art of travel photography. So over this next hour, a half hour, excuse me, I'll be able to talk to you about travel near and far. So ideas that you can apply and take away and use for your photography, whether you're in your hometown or you're traveling. So I love the aspect of creative photography. So I got my start really being so passionate about infrared photography. I wrote a book on that a few years ago and that really opened the doors and led me to all different types of photography. So some of the things I like to think about are uh, conveying a sense of motion. So we're going to go to my hometown in Florida. We won't travel too far. This is down in Coral Cove, not too far from where I live. But what you can see about this photograph is that I like to convey a sense of motion. So as the water was rushing towards the shore and then pulling back to the ocean, was able to convey the sense of motion. And to me, that gives the image more heart and separates it from a snapshot to more of a work of art. So that's the idea I like to work with. Also, an idea I like to think about is shoot it when you see it. So I was actually on my way down to Miami, and then I saw the clouds developing over around, around the Melbourne area. So I stopped really fast, and I wanted to be able to c capture this de developing cloud formation as it was happening over the Melbourne area. So really using a long exposure technique to create this voluminous sky. So really, I shot this for several minutes to be able to capture this more expressive photograph. I love to be able to get to a location early. So usually I go scout out the location, get a few ideas of where I want to shoot, make sure I have several compositions to work from. But I love the idea of the way the waves were coming towards the shore. And you can see this very playful action as the waves got just to the shore and the ripples that happened at that wave line. So be able to capture that really expressive and playful shot. That's the idea I wanted to communicate with with you as the viewer. One of the things that's very important to me is I want you to feel what it was like to be there at that moment. So that's what I hope to put into my images and make them a little bit different. So when you're traveling, it's important to incorporate a sense of place. So here, this, even though this is my home area, I could do this near or far, wherever I was, but this is Orlando, the key to get to the cityscape, so I was using a wide angle lens. Actually, I'm using the, the new 18, or 8 to 15 millimeter lens, which is a fisheye lens, a wide angle lens. And I had that lens, so you notice that it's very, very low. It's like I'm almost in the water with this photograph. Some of the cameras have tilt up monitors, so you can use that to your advantage. So I'm shooting the cityscape, and it's an amazing swan swims up and right in front of my photograph. And uh, so I was able to make a sh few shots before the swan starts snapping <laughs> at my lens. So the key is really knowing the camera like the back of your hand. So you get to these locations. This is South Beach. I wanted to shoot these beautiful, iconic lifeguard stands. So at this location, it, when I got to the location, it really wasn't going to happen that it had this beautiful sunrise. But what was so expressive were, were the voluminous clouds that were moving across the scene. So I always think about being flexible. It's always have plan B when you're shooting. So to me, this worked out really expressive. Also, at low light, you have a wonderful opportunity to be able to capture streaks of light from passing cars. So the idea of this is getting there late in the day. So as the sun set, I had the opportunity to shoot in low light. So really, there's eight to eight second exposure as the streaks of light. So you've got the streaks of light from the taillights and also from the headlights. So that made it a very expressive type of image to be able to shoot. So it's very, very easy to do. On the west coast of Florida, there's Naples. So low light, it's just naturally the low light. So instead of freezing the action of the shot, really had this wonderful soft waters rushing towards the shore. I had a golden glow. So again, I'm using the quality of the light to be able to create a more expressive image. This is Naples. There's an old pier, just a little bit north of, of, of the regular pier that's there. That's an old fishing pier that you can shoot. So moving towards San Francisco. San Francisco is one of my favorite places to shoot in the US. It's, it's absolutely amazing. 
So when I get to a location, um, I know where this is. I can actually walk to the location, it's dark, but I get there before I can see how things are really developing. So I let the subject guide me on how to compose an image. So what I could see was that there were some fabulous cloud formations occurring. So that to me was really expressive. So I want to make sure I walk down a little bit, use my 24 to 70 millimeter lens, one of my favorite lenses, and incorporate the full length of the Oakland Bridge, uh, Bayside Bridge, to be able to get this little firehouse and boat in the water. So again, using low light, beautiful, more expressive images. So this is super in early in the morning before the sun comes up. And of course, as a photographer, you know that you don't get any sleep. <laughs> so yeah, actually. So I found out that the cable cars, about 1245 at night, they come to the end of the line. And the really cool thing about this is that I can stand safely across from the cable car Again, and narrowing my aperture to create that little starburst on the headlight of the cable car. But then I get these wonderful streaks of light behind the cable car. And that to me made more of an expressive, more of a creative image. So these are all ideas that you can apply to your own photography. You can try this in your hometown. It's absolutely a lot of fun and creative to do. And no trip to San Francisco is complete. Of course, you must get the Golden Gate Bridge when you go to the Golden Gate Bridge. I loved shooting this at sunset. It was absolutely amazing, very beautiful. But what I wanted to wait for were the reflections. So as it got a little darker, more towards the blue hour, had these wonderful reflections in the foreground, narrowing my apertures. So I created these beautiful points of light with my 24 to 70 millimeter lens, and then had that blue color. So at sunset, the light isn't the same. 10 minutes after sunset, the light is still boring. But then as it goes on, it gets a little bit more expressive. So that's what I was looking for in that photograph. So we'll head over to Chicago, one of my favorite places to shoot to. This is the Buckingham Fountain. This fountain could live easily in London as it is in Chicago. You know, it's a beautiful fountain. So as I was out scouting during the day, I saw I thought, this is going to be amazing. There's lights there. I've got city lights back there. So this is a place I revisited after my scouting. So I went back to this location uh, during the blue hour. So remember that the blue hour is generally 10, about 20 minutes after sunset. It's really quite expressive. You can see that the colors in the sky are more balanced and more beautiful. So that's the idea I was working with in that fountain. And we must go to Cloudgate. So people call this the bean if you live in Chicago. But if you go there, there's hundreds and hundreds of people because it's such a beautiful structure and it's such an attractive sculpture, highly reflective. But what happens if you go there at 5.30 in the morning, there's nobody there. So you really get a different interpretation. And, uh, and uh, often with my photographs, I like to put you into the photograph as if you were the only person there, that you're experiencing this, this for yourself. So we'll go over to Lake Fled. This is one of the most beautiful places, one of the most beautiful lakes that I've seen. Anytime that you can incorporate mirror perfect reflections into your photograph, you saw the ones set on the Golden Gate Bridge. Well, here we have another mirror set of reflections that were really pretty. I arrived to this location during the blue hour. It's still pretty much dark, but it was really the, at that moment where the sun began to peek over the mountain line. That was very expressive for me. So you have the purple mountains in the background. You have this Rorschach looking uh, silhouette. That was one thing I wanted to work with. And also the light and the mirror perfect reflection. So that was the idea. Working with this photograph. Layers of information. So anytime you see that you've got layers and layers of information, that's a really expressive type of photograph. So I had the green foreground. I had the little chapel on the hill, purple mountains in the background, amazing, and also this beautiful golden light. So again, so I'm using a lens, actually a zoom lens, 28 to 300 millimeter zoom lens, to be able to isolate just the church and have that beautiful background. So oftentimes, you know, you're thinking about what lens am I going to use for this type of art, this type of, and it might not be the wide angle lens. Sometimes it's a zoom lens that allows you to make more expressive photographs. This is a time lapse. Using the in-camera intervalometer, you can do this. This is super easy to do. I like to set my camera up for two second intervals. So you get 
amazing, amazing. And the thing about time lapse is that you can shoot stills and you can shoot video and then you shoot a little bit of time lapse and you're really rounding out the story that you want to be able to share. So this is about 45 minutes outside of Ljubljana in Slovenia. We'll go into We'll go down to Cuba. This is where uh, Joe McNally's going. I'm sure he's gonna get some awesome photographs. I had the opportunity to shoot ballerinas when I was in, in Cuba last time. Again, in incorporating a sense of place. So you can see a little bit of that horizon, of the cityscape, but I'm shooting into the sun. So I have naturally occurring silhouette. And again, narrowing the aperture. So I have a little starburst near the ballerina's heart. So it's, to me, Silhouettes are more expressive and more beautiful, and it's a wonderful to make that type of a photograph. Again, you can use this when you're traveling or if you're near your hometown. I like to work with pet projects. So one of my personal pet projects is to work with the idea of bicycles. So no matter where I'm traveling, I look for bicycles. So in Cuba, I couldn't resist this. We had the old bicycle, the textured and peeling painted wall, yet we had these beautiful fresh flowers that were in the basket. So that was just an amazing shot. So I wanted to work with that idea with that particular image. Filling the frame. Oh my gosh, I love this car. <laughs> Actually was able to rent this car and, and go around a little bit of Fana and get some really cool shots. And we ended up in the Hamill Street area, which is a graffiti district, absolutely beautiful. So in this case, as a photographer, I wanted to fill the frame with color. And another thing is also getting a little, little bit lower to be able to incorporate and give the car a more powerful type of a presence. So fill the frame and then I grab my next lens and, and go in for the smaller, more technical shots or zoom lens shots. On the other side, there's Havana. On the other side of the island is Santiago. It's absolutely beautiful. So the idea of working with this, I was scouting, and I came across this 15th century cathedral, which blew my mind, but I was standing directly in front of it. And to make that shot, it was impossible, so I needed to keep scouting. And I ended up finding a higher location to be able to shoot down and get the entire cathedral, get part of the square, and also the beautiful sky in the background. And it was absolutely, um, it was just breathtaking to be able to capture something like that. But the treatment of it is also converting the image to black and white. If you're shooting in black and white, you can certainly do, but it gives it more of a timeless feel. So this picture could have been taken a few years ago or could have taken much longer ago. So th think about that when you're working with your imagery. New York, oh my goodness. I always wanted to shoot the Flatiron Building. First time I saw the Flatiron Building, it's just, it's so tall. <laughs> it's like, how am I gonna get that in the picture? But it wasn't so much about the Flatiron Building as it was the frenzy of taxis that were all around this building. So the idea of this was to convey that frenzy. And to me, that made more of an expressive image and it was a lot more fun to take. Now, it looks like I was standing in the middle of that intersection, <laughs> but my 24 to 70 millimeter zoom lens puts you visually into that intersection and gives you the viewer the feeling of what it was like to be there in that frenzy. And the light, the exposure time is going to be several seconds. So it's natural that it's gonna be easier to shoot these longer exposure shots. Crazy taxi fun. So one of the things I think about when I'm composing, I thought it'd be fun to convey a sense of motion, but I tilt the camera and I pan with the subject. This is a really easy technique that you can apply to your photography. Super fun to do. And again, that speaks about the frenzy and the action and the activity of New York. Palouse, Washington. I had never been here. I was absolutely blown away by I mean, I live in Florida. We don't have anything like that. It was absolutely gorgeous. And that first presented a, at this landscape at low light, which contours the valleys with light and shadow, which are, are amazing. So again, time is essential to being at certain locations. You know, what lens do I use? It's so fast. It's like an artist with a paintbrush. You know, you really need a particular paintbrush to work your image a certain way. In this case, I'm reaching for my 200 to 500 millimeter lens, which helps me isolate and define the subject. So I love the granary. I thought the granary was really cool. So I, that anchors your eye visually, but then you have this wonderful background, rolling hills and valleys. 
So uh, this is just a fun, whimsical shot. When I first came across this, I was super excited about the graphic qualities. We had the blue sky, the white clouds, the green grass, and these turbines. I'd really never seen the turbines before, and they're the function is very industrial and technical, but I thought, I always like to think creatively, so I want to see what happens if, but what happens if I do a multiple exposure here? And, and now the image becomes more like dandelions. This is much more fun, and that's one of the things I encourage you to do with your photography. Have fun with it, experiment. You certainly could do multiple exposures. So I tried a few of these, and I ended up being very happy with that particular shot. So farmland is amazing out in the Palouse area of Washington State. I saw this little, little bitty farmhouse, but what was so attractive to me was the texture in the foreground and then the repeating shapes and patterns in the sky. You know, I thought that was absolutely amazing. But as photographers, we often tend to put our cameras right up to eye level and that changes the dynamic. So I looked around, I got down in a ditch <laughs> and made the shot. So since I got lower, then you have the perspective of all this wonderful granary in the foreground and also the repeating textures in the clouds. Also, often as a photographer, it's just a matter of waiting for that particular moment. I loved the small little chapel on a hill with these two big, powerful trees beside. And I could see that there were clouds coming into the frame. So I waited for that moment as the clouds passed to make the shot. So often as photographers, it's finding a great location and just waiting for the action. France. So this is, um, a lot of people talk about getting to know your subject beforehand, but I know these are horses, <laughs> but I still got the opportunity to really be introduced to them, and they became very comfortable with my presence and my French presence. So the horses came up, they nibbled on my hat, you know, they would nudge me. So by the time that I was able to start making the pictures, they were very comfortable. And this applies to people too, but I love the horses. Key element to this was I was finding that the 80 to 400 millimeter lens allowed me to isolate action of the horses. So in this case also, I got down low and shot because I don't want any horizon lines or anything dissecting in the middle of my subject. So I got low and got this playful action between the horses. To me, that was a more expressive and beautiful shot. And also the horses running. So I had some very cool horses running towards me as actually laying on the ground to be able to make this shot. The horses did not get the memo that uh, they were splashing so much that they actually ran over me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was fine. I got some really nice photographs. 8402 millimeter lens. Also, to me, one of the things about the horses was the grace, the beauty, and the power. And I was very impressed with how beautiful they were. So to be able to isolate a particular image with this horse and have this action, this blur action, your choice as a photographer is to to freeze the action of the horse or to be able to imply a little bit of a sense of motion. So 500th of a second, we had a little bit of blur in the water. And to me, that was more expressive and more beautiful and more painterly. So down in the south of France, we have these beautiful lavender fields. You've heard of Provence. This is an absolutely wonderful place to visit in late June. You should go. Lavender fields, the guiding path of this road and this little farmhouse that was remnants. But what was so fascinating were the clouds. So I, I thought I wanted to be able to create something more expressive and more beautiful. So I'm using a widening lens. This is also about a six minute exposure. So I'm using a neutral density filter to let the clouds be painted across the sky by the wind. And to me, if you can do it, wind painted clouds, that's very expressive, very beautiful. So again, scouting out during the day, I love Paris, absolutely gorgeous, very crowded, lots of people. But I love the idea. I was really drawn to this particular image, so I wanted to be able to come back to it, revisit it at night. So I feel like at night, you've got these lights, shadows, textures, very, very dramatic. So again, that black and white treatment gives it a bit more timeless look. So in this shot, you're really seeing everything pretty much that we've talked about earlier. Tilting the camera, more dynamic flow narrowing the aperture for those beautiful starbursts. The blue hour, can't get any better than the blue hour. At low light, naturally had that rotation of the windmill. So all those things together made a more expressive shot. London, 
London is really one of my favorite places to travel to. I don't get tired of it. It's absolutely beautiful. Using a 14 to 24 millimeter lens. I love this lens. It's super wide. This is Tower Bridge. So I wanted to give you a sense of place, but I wanted you to feel what that bus was like right beside you. I wanted to feel like that whoosh as the bus passed by. So we have a sense of place, we have a sense of motion, and we have an, uh, an image that really moves past the snapshot into a bit more work of an art. Love this also, Big Ben, we've got Westminster Bridge, but I've had the opportunity to frame the image within an archway. So be aware of those. As you're scouting out locations and you find different places to shoot, this is one I wanted to come back to and be able to shoot with during the blue hour. We'll go over to Russia really quick. I've always wanted to shoot St. Basil's Cathedral. It's an, it, it looks like a gingerbread house. It is just such a fantasy architecture, absolutely gorgeous. But when I arrived, it was raining, it was cold, <laughs> I was getting soaked, but it was waiting for the light. So around the time that the blue hour arrived, the rain had stopped, it was able to go out, make the shot. But what was so expressive were the cobblestones. They had this rain on the cobblestones, so to be able to make that shot. One of my favorite places also is San Antonio, Texas. So again, I'm, I'm working with a little bit lower light, so I'll shoot during the day and I'll come back around the blue hour because then I know the exposures naturally are gonna be longer and I can create more of an expressive image. So with the shot, using low light, four second exposure, these are water taxis. So these water taxis are painted into the scene. So rather than make a snapshot, this becomes more of a painterly artistic image. It was absolutely a joy to shoot. Santorini. This is a beautiful place. Also, if you ever have the opportunity to go to Santorini, this is absolutely a wonderful place to shoot. Everybody came at four sunset. Everybody left, they clapped when sunset was over. And I had the place to myself for like 20 minutes. <laughs> so, but as the lights begin to pop into the city, this is what happens, the city lights begin to glow, that's the time to make more of an expressive image. So really it's waiting for the light. Tanzania, absolutely great. So I had a dramatic sky, which I just needed that fabulous subject. So lucky enough to come across a solitary elephant right in, very close to the vehicle. I'm using a 24, 270 millimeter lens and I was able to put together you know, a fabulous elephant, which was a great subject, but put him in a fabulous environment with the expressive sky. To me, that made more of an expressive type of image that meant a lot more to me. So India, we talked a little bit about silhouettes, the same thing applies here. So I'm exposing for the area above the camels and that will naturally let the camels appear very dark. The key to silhouettes is not letting them merge. So be aware of your background whenever you're shooting. Think about what's in the background so none of the uh, camels will merge there with their riders. And also, it's really important to have a fast lens that you can walk around with and make shots, you know, increase your eyes. So don't be afraid to do that. You get some very cool, very expressive shots. This is the World Spirit Sufi Festival in India. And, and this woman, and she was moving very quickly, but I wanted to capture her lighting the candles. If you go to Iceland, it's amazing. It's very rugged, it's very beautiful, it's very vast. Definitely want to bring your wide angle lens lens to be able to capture this. So I captured the rugged beauty of this over a several uh, minute exposure so you can see the clouds across the sky and, and that contrast between the still water, the rugged rocks, and also the flow of the clouds. Indochina. So here's where, as a photographer, I would want to say sleep again is overrated. <laughs> so, 3 a.m. if you want to be able to get the shot. I left at 3 a.m. to be able to get to this location before the hundreds of people came and would be standing in front of me. So got early, this is Anchor Wat, and to be able to get the shot. And again, the beautiful light before as the sun was rising. Uh, this is Tha Long Bay in Vietnam. It was getting very, very, uh, a lot of atmospheric perspective, a lot of a lot of clouds, a lot of moisture, and, and I think a lot of people think that that might not be a good time to shoot, but that atmospheric perspective can add a lot to the photograph. Again, we have these wonderful reflections. And 
Also for this shot, I really had to have a zoom lens and then had a wide angle lens. I actually had my eight to 15 millimeter fisheye lens using it at 15 to get all the sky. This is tonal sap, this is in Cambodia. So I'm being able to capture a wide variety of types of shots. So what I wanted to leave you with is wherever you go, go with all your heart, shoot with your passion, follow your passion, and really truly enjoy what you do. Try new things, absolutely. So thank you so much for being here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Okay. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Deb Sandage. Beautiful work. Coming up next, Neil Ever Osborne, People, Planet, and Protected Places, right here at the Nikon Theater at 145. Neil Osborne, People, Planet, and Protected Places. <laughs>